Utility is an underrated skill, and not in the sense of learning lineups, I more mean the general idea of consistently being impactful. Each piece of utility can be used to assist your in-game plans, and you could know all the lineups in the world, but still be bad at utility. And that's because the choice in your placement might be at the wrong time, or the wrong place. So, how do you get better at utility usage? There's no definitive answer for such a broad question, but we can narrow down our questions and get specific answers for many situations, which can be transferable to the scenarios you'll face. But before we do that, I think it's a good idea for us to get on the same page, by looking at each piece of utility, what they can achieve, and what they can be countered by. Smoke Grenades When thrown, they'll create smoke, which can act as a wall. People can obviously push through them, but with bad vision. Or people can shoot through them, but you'll see the bullets and where they're coming from via the traces. You can actually use these traces to identify where the opponent is standing, so feel free to shoot back. Smokes can also be used to extinguish molotovs, but for the most part, it's used for blocking off areas of the map, which is good because it singles off your engagements whilst taking map control. But watch out for the mighty HE grenade, because if it's thrown into your smoke, it'll make it vanish, or at least for a few seconds. But this can really catch you off guard. For example, on Anubis, I like to smoke deep mid, and sometimes I'll peek into water, and I've been caught off by this smoke being blown open loads of times. HE grenades will also make a squishy noise when damaging unarmored opponents, and it'll slow down movement speed to anyone it hits, much like when you get tagged by a bullet. The HE grenade will only deal 100 damage when it's a direct hit to an unarmored opponent. When the opponent has armor, it'll max out at around 60 damage, so be wise when you use it, because it's a bit of a waste to deal like 5 damage to someone. Or you could use a double nade, like this one on Vertigo. Or this one on Banana. A HE is also a good partner to the Molotov, because the HE will tag the enemy and they'll be stuck in the molly. But Molotovs are useful in their own right too, since the smoke can't stop the push, just the vision. A Molotov is a good alternative for early round utility, especially if you suspect the enemy to rush you. Alongside that, there are good information plays you can make with a molly. I'll share two examples for this. First one is on overpass. If you molly deep playground early on in the round, it'll force the T side to either stop or use a smoke to put it out. This gives us information and it'll waste one of their smokes. The second example is on B site ancient. If you throw this molly here, you'll burn outside cave and if someone's trying to run cave or mid, it'll tag them or waste a smoke. Speaking of tagging, it's also good to mention that the molly will give an audible tick noise, but it won't slow the enemy down like it would be with shooting them or throwing a HE at them. Another major use for mollies is clearing angles without having to peek them. Another great example on Ancient would be this spot at mid. If you molly this when taken mid, it means you don't have to worry about it when peeking the other angles. But when you are peeking those other angles, you might want to use a flashbang to help you out. If placed well, a flashbang can obliterate your enemy. The key to having an effective flash is making sure the enemy can't hear it, whether it be the pin being pulled or if it's bouncing off a wall, and also having the flash pop right as the enemy see it will maximise your efficiency, because if someone does hear or see the flash coming, they can easily turn around or just sit behind a wall, and it won't be super useful. In certain spots, people will commonly play what's called anti-flash, which is where you just look at the wall, and as soon as the flash pops, you can turn around. This is typically played with someone else so that one person can watch the angle and the other one can play anti-flash. A nice way around this is to do what's called a chain flash, which is where you just chain two flashes together. Theoretically, the first one pops and the anti-flash guy will turn around in time for the second one to hit him. An example of a good flash would be something like this, where you're throwing a flash for your team and it pops as it gets there. And this would be an example of a bad flash. We're very close to the angle, it's noisy, bounces a bunch of times, and it just gives away the information that we're gonna peek. There's a common theme here with a good flash, and it's that you should, not all the time, but typically have a teammate throw it for you. And although I understand it's not always an option, I think that teamwork and communication is something that holds a lot of people back. Cheeky little 5 second interlude boys, if you want to buy any skins cheaper than market value, then use my affiliate link with Skin Baron. You just click it, and that's it. It helps me out massively, and yeah, back to the video. Sometimes you might have the idea to peek something, 
but you simply don't have the time to ask for a flash, or have the time to even consider it as an option. Because even if it takes 3 to 5 seconds, it's still not fast enough if the play is based on a timing. There are three stages if we really want to break it down. There's the idea, there's the communication, and then there's the action. A way to make this more efficient would be to have the idea a lot earlier, giving time for the communication so the action is as easy as flash now. The idea can come at the start of the round, but it can be in the mid round, so you need to be aware of the time it takes to communicate. Even if you just give your teammate a heads up that you want to do something soon, it doesn't have to be specific, but at least you're directly asking the person to be ready so you don't have everyone responding to your flash request. There are also a lot of self flashes. I'm not saying these are wrong, especially if you want to peek at a long distance angle and you know you can pop flash the guy. But even the idea of someone having to turn around can be capitalized on. For example, this flash on Ancient again is really good because you can walk out with the flash behind you and the enemy has to turn around or commit to a fight that he will be blinded in and this can be thrown by yourself. But sometimes it might be better to go with no utility because sometimes a piece of util can give away information. I could have gotten really good timing onto a site but if someone flashes over it'll draw attention to that side of the map and it can be a bit of a coin flip as to whether they'll now expect my position. But on the contrary, if I snuck far behind enemy lines and my mate flashed as if we didn't already have that map control, it can bring a sense of security for the enemy and it gives my flank an extra mask of security. But with any piece of util, you need to be able to reliably throw them. So alongside learning effective communication, it would also be beneficial to get a feel for throwing util. I can provide pop flashes for my teammates on the fly, as in not needing a lineup. This is because I have a lot of experience in just throwing nades. So I recommend just going offline and throwing some util around. Explore not only the left click overarm throw, but also the right click underarm and pressing both mouse buttons down at the same time. Be sure to experiment with all variations of throws, like the jump throw, running throw, running jump throw, all of them. It might feel pointless to load up the game for this reason, but when you're mid-clutch, a piece of utility shouldn't be your main focus, it should be something that you can do without even thinking about it. After talking a bit about utility and different ways we can use it, I hope a common theme has been noticed, and it's that util needs to be used with a purpose. A good example of utility being wasted could be CT side util dumps. We smoke off an area of the map out of fear, and if we have the slightest bit of pressure, we dump all of our util to stop the rush. But this just shows the opponent that you're panicking, and it makes your sight even weaker after the util fades. Each piece is really important, and you should use it when necessary. I've not played much of the game I'm about to reference, and I hope it's not a CS sin. But if we take Valorant as an example, the utility in that game kinda takes the form of powers. Each character has unique powers and a set amount of uses each round. So if we kinda relate utility to being a power, it kinda opens your mind to realise how effective they can be. I understand everyone's first instinct is to delay T's from pushing and take a map control from CT's. But if we take the pressure off ourselves and only use the util when we know it will be impactful, you'll start to notice the reactions to each piece you throw and you'll see the game a lot differently. It's okay if you use your utility a little bit too late, because at least it gives you the opportunity to see how far you can push things, which is the true way to learn. There are still a lot of common mistakes people make. For example, a lot of people will want to smoke, molly, flash, or nade something, and they'll do it by peeking the angle with their util out to throw it. This is pants down central boys, and you do not want to be here. There are usually other ways to throw util that are a lot safer, which kind of brings me to another point, which is, should you learn a bunch of crazy util lineups? And the answer's a bit blurry. I think that there are standard lineups that everyone should know. Like if you want to smoke CT on Inferno, you should really know this lineup, because it's dead easy. And there are other lineups that can be used every round, like smoking window or top mid on Mirage. But I do also think that sometimes people can be too hyper-focused on a lineup that they want to throw, and it can kind of defeat the purpose of the util itself. Like, for example, if the team wanted to rush a site and someone wants to throw a smoke line up, it might be better off to just rush with the team and put the smoke down either on the way in or after you take the site. Because if your team is rushing and you're sat really far back, your smokes will only land by the time we've already taken our fights. So it kind of makes those smokes useless because they're not providing us with active cover on our push. It would be better to just chuck a good flash in on the way in or be ready with a smoke if we get mollied on the push. This way you're having more impact in the present 
and you can be there to trade your teammates. But with all that being said, with the new smoke physics, there are some new lineups that are really fucking OP, and since the game is still relatively new, there are still new ones to be discovered now, but if you do want to hop on a map and learn some util, then go to the practice tab, make sure you've selected these options, and you'll be good to go. You can even try and theorycraft your own lineups, although I do have a bit of a pet peeve about this. Sometimes people will overcomplicate things, and they'll end up with a lineup that they're adamant on using because they made it, and it'll be like a not very useful smoke that's thrown from an irrelevant part of the map. I'm not hating on it at all, because the people who do this are the reason we have commonly known lineups now, but I don't know, maybe a good way of making a lineup would be, we're running into this problem a lot, it would be great if we could have X piece of utility land at Y, but we all need to be in Z area. It's much like our question at the start of the video, we need to narrow down what we're trying to gain from a piece of utility, and that'll give you those certain requirements it needs to be the best it can be. There are other outside the box ways of thinking in terms of util, like for example, if you know the enemy have used all their smokes on a site, you know that A, they can't smoke you off, and B, they can't extinguish any mollies you throw. This can help you decide which site you want to attack, and also which pieces of util can be more effective. But with the same idea of using utility as an option for information, you can apply a bit of pressure on sections of the map in order to get a reaction from the enemy. Like if I flash top banana, it might make them use a smoke. Or you can use a bit more utility to fake a lot of presence when your team are actually preparing to execute the other site, delaying the rotation. But you know, I think that overall, learning utility isn't about learning lineups. It really does help, don't get me wrong, but it's more about understanding how it can help you, and how to actually capitalise off the util. There's no point in throwing a bunch of smokes and flashes on a site if we're all gonna bait, right? I also just want to say thank you, nothing in particular, I just feel very grateful for what we have here, cause, you know, it's actually been my dream to be a YouTuber for 13 years now, and we're actually, like, doing it. But yeah, remember to use my affiliate link for Skin Baron too, I'm trying to push that a little bit more recently. But yeah, go on, I'll, uh, I'll catch you later, bye.